back into the wonderful world of the pencil, we will be looking at some uh, of the pencil tools, editing capabilities and nuances, um, as well as some more features of the stroke. Um, so I'm going to be using the file uh, that we downloaded from this session, um, the beer bottle. And the beer bottle will um, give us the opportunity to um, just work on a few little things. I have to revert mine because the beer bottle document gives us um, a uh, sort of a, a starting ground where we already have some paths. And um, we will start addressing um, some of the, some of the, uh, the lines, but also adding to this and then exploring some uh, different uh, options as far as how to uh, build an object um, and uh, give give it some spatial um, uh, relationships and maybe even some volume. Um, with the pencil tool selected and then double clicked, I'm going to just quickly talk about um, the, the the fidelity again, real quick, where. Accurate means you're going to have shaky lines. If your hand's shaky, smooth will smooth those things out and give you a much more um, efficient path. Uh, we have one uh, thing that we're going to try to tweak, and that's the the top of the bottle where the where the uh, the hole is. And I'd like to set our fidelity right into the halfway point, so it'll be you know not too smooth, not too rough, just kind of sweet and right in the middle. Uh, and I need to make sure that we have um, edit selected paths chosen. And we're going to leave our, our within value to six pixels. So with that set, we're going to edit the top of the bottle. And I'm going to use my zoom tool to move in here and get up nice and close. So we set the attribute in the pencil options window to edit selected paths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this inner path here. It is selected. And if I was to just redraw basically over this, um, this circle, it'll wipe out the original and replace it with the new one. It's a really great um, uh, asset. So if I want to just make it not so tall, <laughs> it didn't do it, of course. Um, try it again. There, it did it. Um, the, it didn't do it because, and it's, I like seeing mistakes like that happen, because of the setting of edit within how many pixels. So if it's a little bit greater, like 12, I'll be able to not have to hit it so precisely, and it kind of knows that I'm going to revisit this path. Um, so if you find yourself redrawing paths that you don't intend on redrawing, then maybe you need to go back into that pencil setting and change that value to something a little smaller so that it doesn't try grabbing onto other paths that might be selected. But as long as they're, as long as you're selecting the one that you're definitely trying to work on, um, then you should be in pretty good shape. So just try this a few times. See, I missed it. I missed it. I'm going to hit undo. It's, it's really interesting how sometimes it will let you edit and sometimes it won't. It's a little fussy, but you just got to keep trying. Right? So I'm, I'm, I'm extending that past its mark. There we go. Um, and I think that the, the redraw feature, the edit, ends up being a, probably the most valuable thing about the pencil, besides the fact that you can kind of sketch loosely. Um, just a little note, I also see here that the top of this, um, you know, the, the nub of the bottle doesn't quite get up into this, um, this first outer ring. You can kind of see this little nook right here. I could either redraw the line or I could get my direct selection tool and move that up, or I could simply address the stroke options um, for my cap. If I hit a rounded cap, now it fixes it over here, but look, it projects this one beyond. I could go with the square cap 
and it still fixes it here, but this is now a problem. So it's good that you can think about those things and say, all right, well, maybe that's what's going to do it to fix it. And then you go, ah, crap. No, it just made a problem worse somewhere else. So in this case, what I would end up doing is I would get my direct selection tool, select just that point, and move it up and tuck it in so that I don't have that little tiny crack right there anymore because you'd cut your lip. Um, so um, let's just do a quick little um, example. Draw yourself like a piece of toast <laughs> and select that piece of toast and edit it. This part could be smoother. You know, select it again. This part needs to go boop and then bump out. This part is really wonky. I'm going to come, I'm going to go boop like that. So it's really great that you can, and I'm holding down command real quick just to select the shape once it's unselected. Um, but, you know, if, I, if I'm looking at this and I go, okay, that definitely needs to kind of round a little bit more and then come back like that. You know, now I have something a little more symmetrical. This one, this corner is sharp, this one's round, so I could try to see if I could duplicate that. So revisiting the pencil stroke is something you just gotta practice and get used to, um, and it's, it's fantastic. There are some issues with it, however. I'm just gonna get rid of that. Um, let's go back into the pencil tool options, and let's say that we choose to check the keep selected option um, uh, active, okay? So now if I draw a path and I wanna draw another one right next to it, I can, but if I keep trying, oh no, now it's not, you're not gonna cooperate with me whatsoever. It's not cooperating. Oh, it is, it is. You can kind of see what's happening. If there's a, if there's a path selected and you draw something near it, it could totally replace that selected path. So um, that is why I try to keep, well, that's a really crazy one, it's really getting extended. Um, that's why I try to keep that value off so that no matter how close I might be to other marks, I can keep adding those marks. I'm not worried about them being edited because sometimes you get in and you do crazy you know, crosshatch work or really gestural things, and you don't want to have to um, overwrite any lines unnecessarily. So on that note, um, let's talk about some some spatial things that we can do with the pencil. We drew some, you know, basic shapes, some delicate form. You know, I drew the dog head, and now uh, we drew a piece of bread. Um, but, like, well, let's, let's address this beer bottle. This beer bottle would have definitely things about its nature that we can see with our eyes that would, um, you know, define its volume and perhaps its, its placement in whatever space that it's sitting in. Um, you might choose to use a method where you, you darken the atmosphere of one side of your object to try to help define where a light source might be or, or the lighter value of that object. So one step could be, you know, doing things like um, like crosshatch work. So let's try that. I'm going to do some crosshatch work just on this side of the bottle. And, um, you know, it could be delicate lines where I'm actually coming through and thinking about them. You know, something like this. And I don't care if I go past them. This is the great thing about digital illustration, is that if I'm doing crosshatch work and I go past the bottle, all I have to do is just get my direct selection tool, select the point, and bring it back so that I'm not intruding. Oh, this one's good. This is a good one to look at. So if I zoom in here, this will happen to you guys and it will drive you crazy. Um, since I was kind of drawing rather fast and getting ready for my other stroke and I was kind of doing these Z things, I ended up having a hanger where I have an extra point and that gives me a corner and because, because of the nature of this stroke is that it has um, miter joint corners, it's projecting past with a sharp little dealio 
if I round it, then it'll bring it back, or if I did a square or a bevel join, then it'll, it'll solve that problem too. Um, otherwise, you could delete that last point. Whoa. So um, this is a case where I can just move that point back, and then here's one where it goes burp, and it's got this whole curve, right? Look at, this is how this stroke ends. At this case, I would select the very last point, and I would just delete it. And I have another weird one here with a bend. I would delete that. And then I'm going to come back out a little bit. Now I can comfortably just move that point back like this. This is revisiting your strokes, and it's something that's really quite important as far as um, presenting some quality work that is um, more thought through and less, um, you know, Let's cared for. So I think um, the crosshatch is really working for me, but those are all lines that are separate. I could also kind of do like some, just some scratchy work where I'm sketching back and forth, you know, kind of going out over here. I could cross it and kind of come in and do some, some work like this, maybe even tighten it in real close to the bottle. It's going to be nice and dense. Scratch a little more out here. It's going to take a second because that was all one line. So then that ends up being um, another way for me to start defining what the background relationship is with this foreground object. Um, but it's really intense. It's really, uh, it's, it's just too much, I feel. This is, this is working. I could keep working on that crosshatch uh, method. But if I wanted to, to try this and still make it work, what's great is that it's one line, so I only have to click on one spot and it selects it all. I can go to my stroke panel. I can turn those corners into rounds so they're not so um, intrusive, right? Um, and then something else that we can think about is, is actual opacity. So this is really heavy. It's really dark. It's really, you know, kind of um, intense and, um, and almost overwhelming. But if I select it, I could approach another part of my appearance properties where I could change the opacity. And so if I took the opacity down to, I don't know, like 50%, then it's not so heavy, it's a little lighter, it's not competing as much with the bottle now, and I can start to focus on some other things. The, the thing with opacity, however, oops, I don't want that paintbrush, I want my pencil. Um, if I make a stroke, oh, this is good to talk about right now too. Um, since I changed my opacity down to 50, you would assume that strokes from now on would also have that same attribute. But this is a, a really important part of um, a setting <laughs> that is buried deep in Illustrator. So um, it's, it's called uh, base, Strokes Have Basic Appearance, and it's going to be found in the Appearance panel. So I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to get the Appearance panel to pop up. And this little guy um, just tells me more about what my stroke is, my fill, and we'll get into this later too. It's really fantastic. However, there's this little flyout menu that you can click on and by default, Illustrator has this thing checked and it just says new art has basic appearance. That means that every time you draw a new stroke, it's gonna go back to the default setting. Um, I'm gonna uncheck that. I can close that panel now. And my strokes now are back to the opacity of 50% that I had um, and, the, and the same weight. I'm gonna increase the weights up to about 16 just so we can see a few things. Um, here's a stroke at 50% opacity. Here's another one at 50% opacity. There's another one at 50% opacity. And see how as you overlay them, you get some interesting tones and variation um, in that value. And eventually, you know, if you overlay it enough, those parts will be black. So this is kind of a cool way to think about some solutions for you as well, where maybe the scratching isn't the thing you're looking for. Maybe the cross hatching isn't working for you. But maybe you want to work with um, a different approach where you have some more refined uh, lines. This is going to get kind of way out there. So I'm going to change that now to be 
pretty thick and an opacity of 50. And now I can kind of hug a little closer to the bottle, get along here, fill these parts in, that part in. And it ends up having a completely different characteristic. Um, the overlap is kind of fun. It's just almost as if you're working with like a, like an ink or something, right? So some of you might end up working on your still lifes or your projects and find that there are some interesting ways to work with opacity. A 50% is still pretty heavy. Um, if I start to lower that down to, you know, something really light like a 10, then I can sort of wander off into some values of, you know, not worrying about, you know, maybe feeling like there's, there's a distance now. And the more I lay in, the darker it can get, but um, different strokes, different lengths, different directions could be kind of interesting to, to play with. This also works really well if you're thinking about ways to treat glass. So I could lay down um, something inside this bottle that gives it almost like that kind of reflection sort of quality, right? Or shadows. So I think that as you, as you explore with the pencil those different attributes, you know, what does what the weight, stroke weight do, variation in stroke weight? What does opacity do for you? Um, how can I revisit lines to make them a little bit better and more, um, you know, working for your, for your form? It's quite, it's quite fantastic. Um, so uh, play with those settings a little bit just to do some experimentation and then apply it to your still life. And... Um, you know, things I'll be looking for will be stroke weight variation. Um, are you using methods to give your uh, objects some volume? What is the lighting source? Where's the shading coming from? Um, how do you, you know, what sort of uh, applications are you working with to really sort of um, develop a mastery of this simple uh, tool? All right. Um, thanks. We'll get into a little bit more uh, in the next film.